Hi everyone. Today we're going to learn how to do electron configurations. You guys have been learning about the atomic structure and in your unit they start talking about where the electrons can be found in each element. So I'm going to show you guys how to do an electron configuration, an orbital notation, and a shorthand notation. Um, I'm going to show you a method that's a little bit different than the one you initially learned though. Um, I find this method to be a little bit quicker and a little bit easier to understand. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the periodic table and you're going to use the patterns that can be found there, but you've got to block it out first so it can be a little bit more easy to read. And you guys have this version posted on Schoology, so if you want to print it, you can, um, or you can print a blank one and color it yourself. Um, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to separate out the blocks. Okay, so this block is our S um, subshell. This block in the middle here that's yellow is our D subshell. This block that's pink is our P subshell, and this is our F subshell. Okay, and each subshell has a max amount of electrons that it can hold. So I'm going to write down really quick what that amount is for each subshell. So your S can hold up to two electrons. Your P subshell can hold up to six electrons. Okay, your D subshell can hold up to 10 electrons. And your, uh, your F subshell can hold up to 14. Okay, so I like to think of these subshells as containers. Okay, um, if you have a cup that holds um, one cup of water, then the max amount of water you can put in that cup is going to be one. If the cup is full, it's going to have one cup of water in it. Okay, this works the same way. If your S sublevel is full, it's going to have two electrons in it. If your P is full, it'll have six, so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to do this example for, the, for cobalt here, which I have an arrow down to. And what you're going to do is you're going to read the periodic table starting up at the top left. You're going to read it left to right like a book, filling in these subshells as you go through them until you hit the element that you're interested in. So for cobalt, I'm going to start up here. And my very first S subshell is the 1S subshell. So I'm going to start with 1S. And because I'm past, because cobalt is past that subshell, that subshell is full, so it's got to have two electrons, and I'm going to signify that by putting a little two uh, superscript on it. Okay, so after the 1s, which is this top row here, drop down to the next row and read it left to right. Okay, this is the 2s. Again, it has to be full. Okay, and then this is the 2p. Again, it has to be full, but in the case of the P, if it's full, it has six. So my exponent will be a six there. Okay, next row, I have three S and it's full. I have three P and it's full. Okay, and then finally, I'm in the row that contains the element that I'm interested in, in doing this configuration for. So this row is my fourth row, okay? So it's my 4s that I'm about to pass through right now, and it's full. Now I'm hitting a D subshell for the first time, okay? D runs one number behind the S and the P. So instead of having 4D here, it's actually going to be 3D. And then I'm going to count how many spaces over the cobalt is, and that's going to be my exponent on the D. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it's the seventh element in the D sublevel on that particular row. So it's going to be 3D7. Okay, so once you have your electron configuration, and I'm going to label that really quick, electron configuration, you're um, going to be asked to do the orbital notation. Once you have your electron configuration, your orbital notation is a lot easier because you can take it from what you've already done here. So your orbital notation is basically taking what you just figured out here, how many electrons are in each subshell and what subshell you're stopping at, and you're kind of placing them into more visible containers. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to make a line for every two electrons you have in your electron configuration. 
okay, and you're going to label it um, for the subshell that that line belongs to. So for your 1S, you're going to need one line because there's two electrons there. Your 2S, you need another line. Your 2P has six electrons in it, so you're going to need three lines for your 2P. Okay, 3S, one line, 3P, again, you're going to need three lines to hold all six electrons. Okay, 4S, one line, and then 3D, here's where it gets a little tricky. The D subshell has seven in it, but it can actually hold 10. If we look at the D subshell, it has room for 10 electrons, okay? And we said over here, it can hold 10. So even though we only have seven, we've got to show the whole container, okay? Just because we don't fill up a cup of water doesn't mean that the top of the container disappears. It's still there. So we've got to show enough lines to hold 10 which means we need five lines for 3D. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back and you're gonna fill these up with electrons, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have an up arrow and a down arrow, and then an up and a down, and you're gonna follow that pattern all the way. And the up and the down arrows are just representing the spin of the electrons. Um, which is not something you really have to worry about at this point. You really just want to get um, this concept down right now. You're going to do this all the way until you reach your very last subshell, which is the 3D. Okay, and then you're going to fill this one up a little bit different. Okay, you have seven. Remember, we have room for ten. So we're going to fill this up by putting one in each and then going back and doubling up until we have seven electrons in the container. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is going to be your orbital notation for cobalt. Okay, last but not least, you're gonna be asked to do your shorthand notation. So I have it labeled over here, shorthand notation. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to your periodic table and you're gonna look at the row that the element that you're working with is in. So your cobalt is right here. Now you're gonna go up to the row before that and you're gonna take the last element from that row. In this case, argon. And you're gonna put that element in brackets to start your shorthand notation. From there, you're going to take everything from the electron configuration that's in the same row as your element. So for, that, for this element, for cobalt, that's going to be this portion, the 4s and the 3d7. And you're going to add that on to the end of your bracketed element, and that's your shorthand notation.